Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about being attacked by spies in slow motion, a book about an underground city, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing J.P. Van Dyke. J.P. is a payroll tax expert that also helps businesses grow their prospects on the side. Thanks, Tiberius. I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited for this show. No problem. And today, we're going to start off with a video of the week, and this is going to be super hot. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Super Hot VR. This game is made by Super Hot Team, and it's on the Steam platform. This game is only available if you're using a VR system. This is a game where you act as a spy, so be sure to talk to your parents first before trying. You're not in any way encouraging kids to spy on random other people trying to kill you. <laughs> so, first off, I get into the game and I see a screen that's flashing black and white. You are then teleported into VR, and there's a red glass-like person there to meet you, right? Wrong! In fact, you're not supposed to shake his hand, but instead, imagine you're a big suspect on a case and there are people trying to catch you like a bounty on your head or something. So what's the first thing you do? Punch him in the face! But then the whole game loads in and now you're in the tutorial. There are three other guys in the room and they have guns. You grab stuff off the table and throw it at them until you can pick up one of their firearms. So then, before you all that loads in, you see some text after you punch the guy, and it says, time moves when you move. So, if you stand very still, you are able to plan out your next move, but if you move, then time is moving as well. This means the bad guys and their bullets are frozen in time and make it easier to dodge them. Hmm. Each level is harder than the other, and remember, you're also in VR, so this is a very tiring game, because you have to move your hand around so quickly that it like makes time go fast when you want to move faster. <laughs> well, this game does have a lot of violence. Now, spying is not a kid's subject, and if your parents don't want you to know about using weapons to hurt someone, you should pass on this game. Good advice. Now, for all of those adults out there who really want to, you know, get dirty, there's really easy levels, and sometimes even hard levels. There's like 15 guys coming over at you in over like 10 minutes. Like an arena. <laughs> and also, sometimes you get to one of the end of the levels, and your headset pops off. Wait, what? I'm in a VR? Playing as a person as in a VR? <laughs> now that is twisted. What are you supposed to do now? I give Super Rub VR 20 out of 10 stars because I like chucking glasses at the glass people and watching them try to kill me in slow motion, but can't because they're too slow and I'm just too good at dodging. And also, I tried to get my dad to try it, but he was way too slow. He got hit by all the bullets. <laughs> and now it's time for the book of the week, The City of Ember. This book was written by Jan DeProw. Let me just back the book. In fact, JP, would you like to do the honors? Absolutely. The city of Ember was built as a last refuge for the human race. 200 years later, supplies are running low and terrifying blackouts are swooping through the streets. It's only a matter of time before the lights go out and never come back on. When Lena finds a part of a secret method, she's sure it holds a clue that will save Ember. Ooh. So, this is an ad book with six whole points. This book is her fourth grade and third month. Now, this is a book about refuge and living in a home that's like a dome. Now, we start with a little backstory. There was a city made underground where the people have been over there for over 200 years, and they have never seen the sun or the moon or grass. Now, there's a box that will open to provide instructions on how to get out after 200 years, and it's handed down from mayor to mayor. But one mayor lost it and died and did not hand it down. 
Now, it's been 240 years now, and a 12-year-old old child finds the instructions, and no one's ever going to believe her, because it was so old. And today is now assignment day, where children are given their new job for the new year. A student named Lena has to pick a piece of paper, and then she got the pipe works. So, that means she gets to work with the dirty pipes. Now, she wanted to be a messenger and run around town delivering messages. Now, Lena has a friend named Dune, and he got a messenger. And, well, he was upset because he wanted to work close to the big generator. See, the entire city ran on a generator that was run by an underground river. But, they were having blackouts, and when it was dark, it was very dark. No one could see anything. It was legit just pitch black. Now, everyone was worried that one day the lights would go out and never turn on again. So, Doom wanted to learn how to fix the generator and see how it worked. But then... Okay, okay. I can't tell you all the story, but it was a pretty okay ending, but left a lot of questions. I think you should read the book, too. Well, I give The City of Ember 8 out of 10 stars because it was an okay story and the book was all over the place with different places like underground that aren't on the map. Also, my dad really liked the story, but I was still confused on some of the stuff in it until I saw the movie. Hmm. See, Damien Smith, law.com. Couldn't call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing J.P. Van Dyke. JP is a payroll tax expert that also helps businesses grow their prospects on the side. Quite an inter- introduction. Thank you so much, Dr. No problem. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I'm excited. This has been great. I've learned something about a great movie and a great book. Uh, and, uh, you know, my son plays VR, so I'm going to ask mm-hmm. him some questions about what you talked about. So I'm excited so far. Okay, so you were listed as someone that's an expert in payroll taxes and something called the CARES Act. Can you explain to my listeners exactly what that means? Sure. So, um, obviously, during the pandemic, businesses uh, had some financial issues. And so the federal government set up a program called the CARES Act, which was a fund of money, $2.2 trillion, to help businesses who suffered during the pandemic in years 2020 and 2021. $2.2 $2.2 trillion? $2.2 trillion. It's a lot of money. <laughs> I could use that money. Yeah, so could I. <laughs> well, how long have you been doing this? Well, the CARES Act started about a year, just over a year ago. I've been doing it for about uh, seven months uh, working uh, with the program. Um, I've helped uh, a number of businesses already get uh, quite a lot of money and it is for the business themselves. It's, it's quite a lot of money. If it's, based it's not on for the money. people, it's for the business. Well, and that kind of goes both hand in hand because yeah, the only way you get it is based on your employees. You have to have W2 employees. Nice. So you help people make sure that they get paid for the work that they do. Basically it's a rebate. So let me give you an example. You know what a Tesla is, right? Yes. Okay. Well, if you buy a Tesla, the government gives you a rebate for buying a Tesla. You're helping the government, helping the energy and all that kind of stuff. Well, this is the same thing, except it's a payroll tax rebate. You get up to $26,000 per employee that you have. What do you mean by employee for so, a Tesla? If uh, well, I'm give, just giving you an example of what a tax rebate is. Tesla has a tax rebate. This CARES Act is a is a tax rebate mm. uh, from your payroll. So let's say I buy a Tesla. I'm just making sure that this is an example. So I buy a Tesla, and every employee that's in there is twenty six thousand dollars made. 
No, so I, I kind of got off track here. I was just kind of to give you an example of what a rebate is from the federal mm -hmm. government. But the way this works is if your business, so you have a business and you have five employees who work for you and you pay them. And during the years 2020 and years 2021, you had business problems. You, you didn't make as much money. People couldn't work as much because they weren't allowed to go out. Whatever it is, you can get up to, based on your taxes, of course, up to $26,000 for every oh, one of your okay. five employees. So that's what the CARES Act does, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Now I understand it. Okay. So during COVID, it's still happening, but <laughs> okay, I understand. Yep. So what's the most fun part about being a payroll tax expert? Oh, man. I tell you, the most fun part is helping people that didn't even know this was a, an opportunity for them. I helped a lady who owns a restaurant. Her restaurant is actually closed. It actually closed this year because she couldn't keep going. I mean, business wow. was really tough. She was able to get $37,000 for her business based on the years 20 and 2021. Whoa. And she would have never even thought about getting this money. And that was amazing to be able to help her uh, in a way that, she couldn't have helped. How many it. employees did you have? She had seven. So thirty-seven thousand dollars divided by seven. But again, it's, it's a lot of money per person. Correct. And some people are full time. Some people are part time. Everything uh, is based, that makes sense based on the total that you paid. But but her business, because of those employees, she was able to get a rebate of thirty-seven thousand dollars for her business, wow. and she was able. She was actually going to have to file bankruptcy this year because she owed so much money from when her business closed. She's ab able to go in and pay some of those creditors off instead uh, of hurting her. So it, nice. it's amazing to be able to help businesses this way. Because in some cases, this is a game changer in their life. Yeah. So what are your most misunderstood part about your business? <laughs> So the misunder there's three things that are the most misunderstood about this program. One, it's too good to be true, right? As you grow up, yeah. as you go on through life, you're always going to hear, if it's too good to be true, it is. Well, this isn't. Uh, if you, if this isn't too good to be true, because it's, it's a government program. The second thing is a lot of businesses have just never heard of it. They think it's something else. They don't understand it. Um, and again, the other part is, it's just the misunderstanding of what the program is all about. So that's that's the hardest part to overcome. And knowing what the program's we, about really helps you out. Correct. Once we sit and show them and talk to them and get them to understand what the opportunity is all about and how it works, it's it's a it's a pretty simple opportunity for businesses. It's kind of like government bonds. Like if you make a bond with the government, you can earn money back. Except this is money you've already paid. This is money that they're giving back to you. You've actually overpaid and they're giving you a rebate of your money. It's pretty exciting. It's nice. So what type of people need your services? Well, that's really simple. Every business who suffered business issues during the pandemic. Now, it doesn't necessarily always mean money, right? So give you an example, a restaurant. 99% of every restaurant is eligible for this money because they had to close. There were days of the week, even today, that they're not allowed to open because they don't either have employees or the government said they couldn't go out. Um, so they suffered. Churches, another huge one. There were oh, Sundays that people couldn't go to church, and so the churches uh, are eligible. But let's say just for, let's say you didn't lose money. But you lost manpower. People had to quit and you had to do extra work yourself or make your other employees do extra work. That qualifies as part of this as well. So uh, any business who suffered issues and has W-2 employees qualifies. So how does this make the world a better place? Well, think about it from the standpoint of business, right? L let's take it from a restaurant standpoint. In your local town, let's say you have seven restaurants that are working. And that gives you an opportunity to have different places. It gives an opportunity for maybe high school kids and adults to have a job. Even though different people. Right. Every, all of them different people. But then because of the pandemic, two, even three of those restaurants have had to close. 
Um, this gives them the opportunity to maybe stay open, to give employees an opportunity for a job, to give people an opportunity for different places that they can spend their money, which helps the economy. So in all, having more business being around is better for everybody. Nice. So what is the hardest part about working as a payroll tax expert? <laughs> Convincing people that this is real. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the hardest part. It's, it's making people understand. That's and, understandable. <laughs> It is. It's, it's just it's just like you said, it's, you know, making people think of, you know, a government bond or something else. It's this is a real program and it's really beneficial to to any business that's that's qualified for. it. So how long does it take to figure out a business payroll and what programs will benefit them? OK, so it is time consuming for a business in the in the fact that the government, the IRS, requires an immense amount of documentation, right? You don't know this yet because your dad does it for you. But when you do your taxes, um, and I'm making this up, I don't know this for a fact, but you get to claim the square footage of that office where you're doing your show. You get to claim the cost of that microphone, the cost of your headphones, and on and on and on and on. And these are all things that you have to include in your business taxes. Well, for this product, <laughs> there's even more paperwork. So it can take three to as much as six months before the business gets their money because of how much paperwork is involved. Whoa. Yeah, that's the only drawback because the IRS requires major documentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my dad, you also work on the side doing something called lead generation. Can you explain what that means? Absolutely. So have you heard of LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. I have been on LinkedIn since it was created the very first month. Um, it's over, I think we're 20 years now. That was 2013, that I think. Um, I'm number 4,075 or something. And I've been doing LinkedIn marketing services for the last 15 years. So the program that we offer oh. now is a way to help businesses get in front of more people to talk to. If you, for your show, wanted to be in front of certain potential businesses that you could use for your show, that's where I help. I get you introduced to them. I help you to understand how to talk to them. And that leads you to what we call a business relationship. And that's what I help wow. businesses do. Nice. So can you find leads for like any company? Any business. If there are 830 million businesses on LinkedIn, business people on LinkedIn, anybody, Tiberius, anybody you want to talk to is there. Anybody. I don't care what type of business. I don't care what they do. I don't care how long they've been in business. I don't care what title they have, what industry they have, what geography they have. They're there. And I can How about finding sponsors for my show? There you go. <laughs> it's absolutely something that I can help with. Nice. So what is more fun, finding leads or doing payroll taxes? Well, for me, the payroll taxes has a bigger commission. So I kind of like that one a little better right now. Because it makes well, a lot of people helpful. But it's limited. The uh, payroll tax program, the ERTC program, is only available for about the next two years. That's it. Uh-oh. We need to get that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you interested in lead generation? Um, my own self, when I launched, uh, I'm, um, I don't know, we talked about this. I'm retired military. I was in military intelligence. And then I got out as, after as an officer in the army Rangers and thank you for your I, service. I, thank you very much for mentioning that. And I decided to open my own business and nice. I didn't know how to do it. And I had to get leads and I'd already been on LinkedIn and I started to use LinkedIn to get leads for myself. And then it ended up being so good at it that I started to try to find more for other people. Mm -hmm. What's the craziest situation that you've run into while doing your work? Oh, this is great. So I had a lady who wanted to do this program with me so badly. And she um, does all of her billing, all of her tax stuff, everything in a journal. She doesn't use electronics wow. at all. She doesn't even own a computer. Well, wow. 
can't do that. I mean, she's actually had to buy a computer and start to transpose. She's just got this journal. And that's how it used to be done. Ask your dad. He looked old enough to understand this. Ooh, that's how business used to be done. You had a journal and everything you did, wow. every sale, everything you buy, everything you whatever, you wrote down in a journal. It had different categories wow. because the IRS doesn't need to see the paperwork. The IRS just needs to see the total. So she's wow. still doing that. And it was it's it's still going on to try to get her 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 money because she's got a lot of stuff she's got to move over to uh, electronic. That's really nice. <laughs> it's different. What advice would you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and work in payroll tax industry? Got it. Well, you can't grow up and work in the ERTC because it's going to expire in about two years. But there's all kinds of ways to help people. Um, not just in this type of program, but in accounting and in tax programs, things like that. Um, just requires math. Uh, go through the, the courses and decide you want to help people. That's the types of business that you might want to do as you get older. That's really dependent on what you want to do. Do you want to help more people or would you rather just be kind of somebody that goes behind, does the paperwork and does this kind of stuff? Um, but Everything's about trying to do what you want to do about yourself. There's a great saying that I heard as a kid growing up, and it's still just as true today. If you work at something you love, it's not a job. It's a hobby. It, well, it's, it's, it's a passion. It's a career. Yeah. But if you don't like what you do, you need to find and do the things you do like to do. I do Ooh. like doing this. So this and is it's a great. passion. And it's 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 not a job. It's not it's something you love to do. And I, I encourage you to keep going. You got a, a terrific show here and I think it's just gonna keep getting bigger. So when you were a kid, what did you want to do when you grew up? Did you always know that you were gonna be working with payroll? I wanted to be a soldier. That's all I ever wanted to be was a combat soldier. My uh my great grandfather um was a soldier, my grandfather was in Korea, my uncle was a Cobra pilot in Vietnam, and that's all I ever wanted to do and you know, I, I, nice. I went into the military. Unfortunately, I was uh, shot down in a helicopter accident during the Gulf mm -hmm. War. And they said I could stay in, but all I could ever do was sit behind a desk. And I didn't want to do that. So yeah, yeah. sitting behind a desk is not fun. No. So what was the first job that you ever had? First job I ever had what was, what, I guess, what would be a, considered a real job. I'm from Virginia. And there's a little town called Old Town between Washington, D.C. and Mount Vernon, where I'm from. And I was a bar back at a restaurant. Um, and I just helped bartenders fill the ice and fill stuff. And the restaurant um, is actually still there today. The same restaurant that uh, that I worked at, which doesn't mean I'm very old. So don't go there. Um, but it's uh, it's still there. The first job I ever had. Wow. So was there anything you learned from that job that helped you to be a band of payroll uh, tax expert? Um, yeah, talking to people, even people that, you know, I was just a bar back. I just transferred cases here and back and ice back and forth. But people ask me this or talk about that. And just, you know, being a type of person who is willing to have a conversation with somebody, even if they're not a client or a potential client, just having that opportunity and, and be learning how to talk to people. Um, it's great. You do the same thing, learning, you know, just being able to talk to somebody who we just met, but you and I have had some great interaction and conversation. It's a, it's a true, true testament to your personality that you can do yeah. that. It's going to help you as you go on through life and all kinds of different things. So who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? Um, my grandmother, I was raised by my grandmother and, um, she worked hard, uh, her whole life and she, uh, she raised her kids and she raised me and she taught me to always be true to what's inside your heart and don't ever be afraid to work hard. So what message do you want to tell children all over the world about doing the work that you do? Well, I don't necessarily meet, think that I want to tell them about what I should do, but I, I think I would tell the children that, that are listening to this is to really read, don't be afraid to read, find those things that make you happy. Keep learning, keep exploring different things in the world, different things in your life. Uh, you never know what's going to basically excite you because you haven't found it yet. I'll give you a, a great example. My son, when he was four, 
didn't like pizza. Who doesn't like pizza, right? Yeah, look at your face. Exactly. Who doesn't like oh, pizza? Oh, no. <laughs> and it was because he would never give it a chance. And then he gave pizza a chance. And then pizza did not become a food in our home. It became a food group. <laughs> Everything revolved around pizza. So I encourage kids to just keep exploring the different things in life and finding those things that they don't even know yet that's going to make them happy. So what was the biggest mistake you ever made and how did it change as a person? <laughs> biggest mistake. Well, I had a chance. Um one time, oh man, there's a couple different things I should say here. I have a uh, dream. When I was, um, after the military, I had a chance to work for a company that I didn't know too much about, and I passed. And it turned it out, they became a really big company, and I would have been in there in the beginning. It was called Dell Computers. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty big company. And I had a chance to be in there, and I didn't. I, I, I passed on it. So it was and and I guess to learn from that is, you know, you have to really examine the things that you, the opportunities that you have. Sometimes you're going to go through life and you're going to find things that, that you did make a mistake on. But I honestly believe this. There is nothing I've done, no mistake I've made that I would change because it doesn't mean that would be who I am today. Those mistakes, those things that I went through have shaped me into being who I am. So I'm, I embrace those things. There's no regrets. Yeah. No regrets. Nice. So now can you tell me that one story, you know, remember this is a kid show, but that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Hmm. Come on. You can tell me. Should I tell you about the time I dropped my son? Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. All right. I'll tell you a story I've never told anybody. So there was a time when I was young and this was back when grocery stores and different things were all different. And I was about 12. And at this grocery store that was near our house, they would bring in all the donuts and breads and all that kind of stuff. And they put them on these carts right in front of the loading dock at oh, like four o'clock in the morning. So one Saturday we were out real early in the morning and we were walking around like 530 in the morning and we came across this and I took a tray of donuts. I did. I took I'd never stolen anything before. I'd never, never stolen anything. And I took a tray of donuts and me and a friend ate them all literally like 24 donuts, so 12 donuts a piece. Yeah, I was pretty sick. I got home a little while later and I was throwing up and grandma could see what I was throwing up. Goodness. And I told her a fib. I told her that they were there and the guy was going through stuff and we helped him load the stuff. So he gave us a tray of donuts and I regretted that. And when I was 17 years old, I told my grandma that story that I had lied to her. And um, to this day, mad. I regret, I don't want to say she was mad. Um, she was disappointed because she thought I knew better and I did. And even to this day, I regret stealing those donuts. I, I know I didn't hurt the business necessarily. Um, but well, I, I mean, you kind of did because of the loss of money. <laughs> but I hurt myself more by yeah. allowing myself to do something that I truly knew was wrong. Wow. Is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? I think they should pay a lot of attention to you. I think you're a smart kid. I think you've got a great head on your shoulders. And I think that you could try to expand what you're doing to include a whole lot more things for young people to, to uh, be a part of. Thank you so much for the time I had with you today. No problem. Do you have a Facebook or website for my listeners to want to follow you? I don't have Facebook. Uh, I really, the only social media I do is LinkedIn. LinkedIn and I'm JP Van Dyke. All you got to do is look me up and you can find me there. Nice. Well, what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Did you like my haircut? Yeah. <laughs> you like mine? I, I like yours. I've been bald before bald was popular. So I've been oh, bald goodness. a long time. My hair is just big and fluffy. <laughs> 
Well, thank you, JP, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Absolutely. Thank you, Tiberius. I appreciate it. No problem. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! And now it's time for Math Corners. Thank you so much, JP, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, we're going to do some more multi-step word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about payroll. Marianne earns $5 per hour. Last week, she worked five hours on Monday, two hours on Tuesday, and two hours on Wednesday. She had Thursday off, and then she worked 10 hours on Friday. So how much money did Marianne earn in all last week? Uh, $95? Well, let's hear the answer. Well, first is a real world problem because people have to figure out the payroll of staff that work different hours per day. So to solve this problem, you have to determine how many total hours Marianne has worked that week. So to do that, we add 5 plus 2, which is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 10 is 19. Now we take that 19 hours and multiply it by 5 in an hour, and then you get 9 times 5 is 45, carry the 4, 5 times 1 is 5, um, plus the 4, and then you get $95 total. I got it. Nice. Well, that does not seem like much, but that's before taxes. <laughs> hey, it's not tax-free. Sorry. That's right. So, JP, do you ever see a payroll with people that only make $95 in a week? Um, Part-time employees, high school kids, sure. Yeah. Hey, they're getting by. Well, if you don't have any bills, it's not yeah, bad. Yeah, that's true. Except if they have a single dorm. <laughs> <laughs> now, JP, my teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you use math in your work? Every single day. Every day I use math. I don't use English quite as much as my teacher said I do, but math every day. I mean, whether I go to the grocery store, whether I go to a restaurant, whether I'm trying to figure out what time it is, it's oh, all yeah. math. It's all math. It's like everything is just numbers. Mm -hmm. It's like how many atoms are in your fingers? <laughs> you know, that numbers. One. This is all a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, JP, for your help with the math corners. No problem. My pleasure. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom Braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the heart of the lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and ability. This week, we're going to talk about integrity. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. The qualities of integrity is honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and fairness. So this week, I saw integrity with my dad's friend, Alfredo. He had worked on my dad's kitchen, and he really made it look nice. But a few days later, one of the drawers was not closing properly. After a few more days, three of the drawers were scratching the side of the wall and not opening the right way. My dad told Alfredo about it, and he decided to come down and fix it right away and not add any extra charge. That is being sincere and fair with his work. Alfredo showed integrity in getting the issue fixed, even though it took a few days to find the problem in the first place. Very good. So, JP, did you see your use integrity at all this week? Um, yes. And for me, integrity is really, in a business sense, all I have. My word and what I say and what I deliver 
is all I have. Everything else is stuff that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference if integrity is not there first. So I had a client. That's true. Who, I had a client who was using my services. My services are for a full year. He decided to quit. Uh, this was before, but he decided to quit. He was working on some other stuff and he didn't want to use my service. And he came back four months later and said he changed jobs again. Could he use the last three months of my marketing? I said, absolutely. You signed up for a year. You only use nine months. I don't care if you quit six months ago, whatever. That's the integrity that works for me is I'm going to give my clients exactly what exactly I say. Exactly what I do. said. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. We should always try and be lying strong everything we do, shouldn't we? We should, absolutely. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing J.P. Van Dyke for being on my show. It has been well, so much fun talking to you today. I think we learned a lot about the CARES Act and payroll rebate programs. Well, I appreciate being on the show. It was a pleasure meeting you. No problem. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at the Tiberio Show. And please be sure to visit the Tiberio Show on YouTube and like and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberio Show. Your host, Tiberio.